for those of you here on facebook.com backslash live now dt it is now time for myself and mike sofka to analyze the entire nfc east we timed this perfectly mike and that is you know in the fact that next week believe it or not next week will roll us into the nfl season god willing and we will have our final division we've gone division by division it's eight weeks and our final week will bring us into game week when we have the pardon me and god bless me the nfc west so we have the nfc east this week and then we will finish off just in time to bring you our final division of the eight divisions as we've gone north south east and west in the afc and north south and east today west next week and then we'll be right into the nfl season so bringing you coverage of each division analyzing them and predicting their order of finish all the way up into the final hour before the NFL is set to kick off. Today we will be covering the Dallas Cowboys, the New York Giants, the Philadelphia Eagles, and the Washington football team in alphabetical order. And this will be history in the making as I will say the name Washington football team more than I've ever said it. And hopefully I won't have to say it after this week because hopefully Washington will cancel out their identity crisis and finally pick a name. I don't care if they're the Washington Pickles at this point as long as they have a name set in place you're watching and listening to the fantasy football power hour proudly presented by the wildcat sports pub 3680 milton avenue in camillus new york you can go there for dining in or dining outside and you can also have curbside pickup takeout and delivery by calling 315-487-2222 for the wildcat make sure you grab a drink and get some food and truly appreciate a fantastic place that to me is what i always wanted I wanted that, you know, sports bar, TVs everywhere, awesome place, relaxing, people wearing jerseys of, of all different teams in one area. I wanted to have all of that, but I wanted it to be a local establishment, and the Wildcat Sports Pub brought that to Central and Upstate New York. So, to me, there's no better place to go to watch the games than the Wildcat, and I look forward to doing that with you this season, God willing. With that being said, let's bring in the other half of this tremendous fantasy football power hour, and I say tremendous because... I am honored and privileged to be working with one of the best in the business, Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com. My good sir, how are you today? I'm doing awesome. How are you, Dan? I'm doing well. Uh, Jerry, who's a Washington fan, says he wants to call the team the Washington Creepers for the administration. Hey, I get it. I, I, I <laughs> see it. I mean, that's a, a total train wreck. We could do an entire show on the Washington football team. I think they should have uh, kept the name and just changed the logo to a red potato because it's a red skin. It's a red skin potato. You know what I mean? Let's just, <laughs> I, I get it. You know, no matter which side you're on, whether you yeah. think that's a racist thing or whatever, just yeah. let's get on with it. But I do understand the peculiar situation they're in in that regards. But the upper office shenanigans and things that we're hearing about now, it's just crazy. And it just goes to show you the NFL is a microcosm of the real world. I'm sure this is going on in some other company somewhere else, and we just have no clue it's even happening because it's not the Washington football team. So that's what makes it newsworthy. It's going to continue to dominate the news because that's what the news does. They try to bring out all the bad stuff and put it on TV. Yeah, you know, and when I actually talked to I had this conversation yesterday, and obviously Redskin, a uh, terrible name choice as far as respecting an entire community of people. But, you know, this is something that should have changed a while ago. They brought it up like two years ago. They did. People were outraged, and it was the number one thing leading the news, you know, leading everybody in the news. And it was like, let's start a protest, and let's do all this stuff to change the name. And I said, okay, they're finally going to change the name. This is great. And then it went away. And now, amidst everything going on with social justice, it's come back up again. And Washington decided to change the name to... Nothing to a giant blank slate, which is very confusing. It makes no sense to me whatsoever, but hopefully things will get better. But I do agree with you, Mike, that the news tries to find the worst thing. In the, and, and the funny thing about it is I was having this conversation, like I said yesterday, and I'm talking to my buddy Evan, and I told him, I said, I remember watching the news with my grandma, and there was like a fire, and then another fire, and then a murder, and then a shooting, and then another shooting, and then another shooting, and it was negative, 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 negative sports negative 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 weather and then as they're rolling the credits really 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 fast they're like and by the way there was a new baby giraffe that was born at the zoo and i was like god forbid you put that at the front that there was anything positive that happened so 
Mike and I are going to be your positive source, and I think that you would agree with us that even when we analyze a team and we constructively criticize the team, we're always respectful of the teams because that's what it's about. We want you to have a positive place to go for your news, and Wake Up Call has always been that. I got thanked in coronavirus time for people saying, you know, thank you for being so positive. I needed that. And I said, well, I haven't changed in 18 years of being a, almost 18 years of being a broadcaster. I don't plan on changing. And in 34 years of being alive, I've decided that positive is the only way to go. So, you know, you will get positivity here. We will talk about things. There's hard subjects. There's a lot of stuff we've had to talk about with social justice and whatnot on the show. But ultimately, this is a place for a positive look at the news and it's always going to be that way because as my grandmother told me a long long time ago i said grandma how are you so positive when you watch the news and you see all this negativity she said simple what's my alternative so with that being said mike and i are proud to bring you the fantasy football power hour but before we do that mike and talk about the nfc east you and i got to do something we got to make history yesterday night and people can go back and watch this video i'm going to put it on youtube today so you'll be able to see it on YouTube.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. So be patient with that. I'll be doing that after the show. But you can watch it on Facebook.com backslash Live Now DT. And you can also watch it on our Facebook page at Wake Up Call DT. We got to do our ever our first ever live look in to a draft that was happening in real time while you and I were analyzing the draft. It was a 16-team league. You were in the league. Your draft was right in. You were right in the middle of this 16-team league, pretty much. And we had the opportunity to talk about a draft while it was happening, point by point, piece by piece, which I think is one of the coolest things and most interactive things and dedicated two hours of time at least to it. I think it's one of the one of the coolest things we've ever gotten to do to really get that extensive in fantasy football. What did you think about it? Yeah, well, I think it's, I think it's fascinating. You know, if, you, if you've surfed the internet if you've spent time on youtube or if you have a, a youngster or a teenager they watch a video of people watching a video or people playing a game and they're in that little box in the corner there and they're commenting on a game somebody else is playing so we're not watching the game yeah we're watching somebody comment on the game and we had that same unique opportunity in relation to fantasy football last night and it was a wonderful thing for me to be live on the air while I'm doing a draft because normally I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at that, I'm planning ahead and I was able to do that, but to do that and share my uh, stream of consciousness, to share kind of what direction I was thinking or why I did this or why I did that or why did this guy do that or why did that team do this. You know, I just I just found it really cool to be able to share that with, with people. So, yeah, hopefully somebody will check it out. Maybe they'll learn something from it, and maybe we'll all be better fantasy football players for it. Yeah, you know, and I think it was a lot of fun, and it took on immediately. A lot of people watched it. I want to thank you all for that. And on top of uh, on top of watching it, you know, it's a, the cool thing about it is we've had the opportunity to, you know, also uh, see – what it's done since then and the amount of traction that it's had. So I think it's really, really cool to be able to uh, to share all of that. I put up my name for Washington. I think they should be called the Washington Bailouts, and I used a GIF of Bugs Bunny counting some money. I'm all about right. the bailouts, man. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, well, somebody's got to pay that money somewhere, sometime, <laughs> some way. That's the only thing. I mean, yeah, I'm all for going to the store and buying a bunch of stuff, but when that credit card bill comes, I'm like, oh, man. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, it is what it is, you know. It's, you know, and in Washington football team, how do you cheer for that? You know, it's usually go Vikings, go Giants, let's go Mets, whatever. We say, let's go the Washington football team. <laughs> I mean, well, what do you yeah. do there? Well, I think the thing that's funny is, you know, if you chant it out, like you kind of like uh, uh, my buddy Evan, when we talk about FSU, you know, when it's F-L-O-R-I-D-A-S-T-A-T-E, Florida State, Florida State, you know, so I, I, I'm i sitting there thinking about people going W-A-S-H-I-N-G-T-O-N-F-O-O-T-B-A-L-L-T-E-A-T. I mean, people are asleep, and, 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 and the people that are going to be, you know, the, the drunk people are going to go, W A S A is it an H I T and then there's a touchdown that's been scored. So I mean, you know that that's a very long name to stomach. And at this point, like I said, just be a soccer team and call yourself the Washington Football Club. 
because that works. WFC, and then we move on with our lives. But, you know, it, it normally when you're making a decision about something as important to a franchise as their actual name, you don't delete a name before having an opportunity in another one. I don't know what the two months has been for. I don't know what the conversation is. But just like I've seen the inability of the Washington Redskins to make good decisions on the field, they're making horrible decisions off the field. And to know that they cannot have it, I mean, I think I could come up with 50 names if you told me to sit down today and do it. I mean, I'm constantly, I, I'm in a process right now of doing a bunch of things with my with uh, my company that I can't like put out there because I think it's really cool and I'm kind of, you know, keeping it to myself and in a very tight circle of like kind of my cabinet. And, you know, we're working on some really cool things, but, you know, you give me an opportunity. If, and, Mike, if you said to me today, hey, Dan, I want to do like a, I want to do a two-minute drill segment, but I want to call it something really cool. I'll have three names to you by noon. I mean, that's just how it is. So the fact that the Washington football team does not have a committee together, or maybe they have a committee together, but, you know, for whatever reason, they don't have a name right now. Jerry, who's a fan, said Red Wolves or Red Tails would be okay with me. Couple of wise guys, huh? Talking about both of us this morning. I don't think Red Wolves makes sense. I think the Red Tails does. And I think if you're going from a place of uh, this is a racist name, and then you switch to the Red Tails and you give appreciation to the Tuskegee Airmen, you go from being a team that's considered to have a racist name to a team that's honoring, you know, a community that wasn't honored fairly. So, you know, that could be an immediate switch from a negative to a positive which I think would make a lot of sense. I'd love to see the planes on it. They could, you know, when they score a touchdown, you could hear the you could hear the plane making that sound and then you can actually have like a red tail plane have something fly over instead of having a jet or something, have that fly over the stadium, maybe have it land, whatever it may be. It would be really really cool to see the red tail, have it fly over the stadium, they score a touchdown, you're playing the sound of the engine. You know, or the propellers, I should say. You know, it makes it makes a lot of sense. But whatever makes sense in Washington obviously doesn't make sense. You know, whatever makes sense to us doesn't make sense in Washington, which I feel like is what I talk about all the time. So I mean, uh, it's just it's just the reality. You know, normal people sitting at home seem like they can figure out government better than government. So you know, I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that another thing in D.C. has not been figured out and there's no decision being made. Yeah, it's, I think, you know, a lot of it is, I think there's probably behind the scenes some decisions already made, but it's my understanding, trademarking, licensing, the process with the NFL, and then you got to hit the ground running as far as merchandising and commercialism and, you know, physical markers and, you know, just so many avenues, T's to cross and I's to dot in the NFL. To us, we can come up with a name, but... There's money involved here as well. So there's a lot of moving parts I'm sure we're not privy to. So I'm sure it's going to take some time. I'm sure the Washington football team is just the place card, if you would, for, you know, the name that they're going to announce in the next, you know, 8 to 12 months probably. But um, you know what? I think they got bigger things on their plate to worry about, even though they have one of the easiest schedules. they got a lot to worry about, in my opinion, as far as wins. I'm sure we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, and, and Johnny said the Washington Ronas during corona time so he, he uh, came up with that one here uh, this morning I like it. but uh you know just uh very very strange and at a time where you would think that teams want all the money that they can get and owners want all the money they can get if they don't have fans in the stands where do you get that money what can people do right now online shop right they could buy merchandise ain't nobody buying merchandise with a with a with a yellow w on it i mean maybe four people but I mean, this is this is not this is not a time for you to not know what you're doing with your franchise. So Washington, yeah, I agree with you, Mike. You got to go through, you know, you, you got to jump through hoops and whatnot. But figure it out. You should have had a plan in place before you got rid of the name. So Johnny said the Washington pandemics. He's all over this this morning. So he's he's saying that. But a lot of crazy stuff going on right here with the Washington football team not having a name. But I like the bailouts, and I'm sticking to it. I also like the Red Tails for a genuine, real name that would actually pay some homage to, uh, to you know, a group of people that maybe didn't get the respect that they deserved back then, but they can have it now. So with that being said, let's jump into the NFC East. I want to let everybody know, since Facebook gets weird, I want to let everybody know, including Mark Zuckerberg, that the following videos that you will see from the Dallas Cowboys, New York Giants, 
Philadelphia Eagles and Washington Redskins are not owned by Dan Tortora Broadcast Media. They are owned by the NFL and its partners. They are owned by CBS, Fox, ESPN, NBC, and so on and so forth, including the team's connection to it, the partnerships that they have, and all of that, including the fact that the, the commercials that you may see and the promotions you may see do not belong to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora either. So, with that giant disclaimer that I'm sad to have to make, but I have to make it because Facebook sometimes puts a lot of people in jail for minimal offenses, I'm going to let you all know that the videos you're about to see do not belong to us, they belong to the NFL and their partners. With that being said, Mr. Mike Sofka, now that I've handled the disclaimer part of things, I will now send it off to you to talk about these Dallas Cowboys. Hold on, Dan, there's somebody at the door. <laughs> yeah, who is it? Hey, Dan, the Facebook police are at my door here. They have some questions for you. No, hey, listen. I played the fifth. Due process, baby. <laughs> Look, the NFC East across the board has one of the easiest schedules in the NFL. The only division to top them or be as competitive with them in the ease of schedule this year is the AFC North, who's going to have a couple good teams this year. But I'm only seeing maybe one, maybe two decent teams in the NFC East. And when I talk about the NFC East, I'm going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, they got some pieces. They got Amari Cooper. They had Michael Gallup. They're going to mix in some CD Lamb. I think Blake Jarwin's underrated. I think he's going to be a dominant tight end in the league. Dominant in the essence of they haven't seen anything like this in Dallas for a while. I think he's going to find some opening underneath with everybody worried about the deep threats. And then they have Ezekiel Elliott running the ball. Any one of these guys can break a long one at any time. So it's, it's just real interesting. I'm looking at their schedule, and I see a bunch of wins to start the year. I see them coming out of the gate at 5-1, and one, then racking up maybe a loss here or there at Philly. I, I just think they're solid up and down defense, offense. I think they're built and ready to win now. I think they got stronger in the draft. If you would have looked at this team just a year or two ago, you'd have some questions, but every year. There's the Dallas haters, there's there's them boys, and then there's the cowboy haters. And how about them cowboys? And, you know, it's it's great that they're the focal point of the NFL year in, year out. You know, and, and, and they say everything's bigger in Dallas. Well, their win total is pretty big. It's the biggest in the NFC East. Vegas has them winning 10 games this year. And I think Vegas is on to something. I think they're going to go 11 and 5. I think they're going to win the division. This is a team that has the depth and the strength to be able to make a push come the playoffs. Hopefully, we'll have a season long enough and strong enough to withstand anything outside, any outside interference, any diseases, or anything else that's happening in the world. Hopefully, we'll still have football because, like you pointed out early on, Dan, in the show, when you were talking about the news. Bad news, bad news, bad news. Oh, look, sports. You know, so it's something to keep our mind off this, you know, crazy world here. Again, I like Dallas. They're the pride of the NFC East. And, you know, the Dallas Cowboys, I had, I have the Philadelphia Eagles just slightly edging them out in the division, but I do believe that can change. I was very, very close with that, and that's only the uh, the facts of the reality that the, uh, the, Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys, when they're at the end of the season and all they have to do is win – like one game out of their last three, they somehow find a way to not do it. So, you know, that's my concern when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys is closing out a season in a positive way and taking care of business is usually a place of concern for me. But outside of that, you know, I think the Dallas Cowboys uh, do have a lot to offer. They have a lot to offer you in fantasy value. And so I think, you know, when you look at this Dallas Cowboys team, you know, defensively what they can do and what they could bring to the table – uh, I'm obviously a, a fan of Demarcus Lawrence, and you know Sean Lee, if he can stay healthy, is a big thing here. Uh, Leighton Vander Esch is obviously somebody that uh, is on this team in the middle of that defense as the quarterback of the defense, so to speak, at middle linebacker. Uh, Jalen Smith is there. Uh, Trayvon Diggs also a part of the team at the cornerback position. Ha ha, Clinton Dix, one of my favorite names, came from Doctor Phillips in Kissimmee area down in Florida, uh, right by uh, where Disney is and right by where I was uh, living a few years back. Ha ha, Clinton Dix uh, go, went to the Green Bay Packers from Dr. Phillips and is now a Dallas Cowboy. So on the defensive side, I think they have you know a lot of uh, interesting players there. Uh, we talked about in hour number one with Bob Holiday 
how every single season you can bet on Notre Dame having a good offensive line. Well, the Dallas Cowboys had Jerry Jones bet on it when they drafted Zach Martin, their right guard, who is still there doing his thing. A Tyron Smith at left tackle there as well. Notable names on the offensive line. Dak Prescott, I don't think he's a – I don't think he's the – Right now, I'm not saying he can't be, but in this moment, I don't see him as as being the second highest paid quarterback in the current NFL behind Pat Mahomes. But you know, I know that they got to figure out their contract with Dak Prescott. Something that's been talked about the last couple of years, and it's still not figured out. Hopefully, they'll be able to figure it out. But this could be a year where he shows himself. He's been up and down, and sometimes around the corner. But he's got enough talent to be a team that, dare I say it could be a Super Bowl caliber caliber Dallas Cowboys team. Normally, you see Vegas do it every single year. They say, Cowboys are going to the Super Bowl. Cowboys are going to the Super Bowl. I think they just like taking people's money. And, you know, in the reality of it all, the Cowboys this year, in my opinion, for the first time in a very long time, with head coach Mike Montgomery, who's a coach that I think will tell Jerry to go sit in the corner and handle his business so that he can coach. I like the fact that he brought in a coach that has some gumption, I'm not going to knock Jason Garrett by any stretch of the imagination. I feel personally, not having been in the organization, I feel like Jason Garrett was a guy that you have on the team that doesn't necessarily have a backbone. And so that was a a concern to me to see that. And sorry for that little ad there about, uh, you know, cutting your fingernails and all that good stuff. But, um, you know, here as we watch this, uh, you know, courtesy of the NFL and its partners seeing the Dallas Cowboys, I think that Mike Montgomery coming onto this team is putting them in a situation where, like when they had Jimmy Johnson, you have a court, you have a coach who is a coach, a coach who is going to butt heads if he needs to with Jerry Jones, a coach that has his own backbone and his own thoughts. And I think that this is Jerry, maybe, maybe, just maybe, finally admitting after all these years that he wasn't going to win any championships doing what he had been doing, which was trying to be the head coach and everybody else on this team. So... I like the fact that Mike Montgomery's there. I like the fact that Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, and C.D. Lamb are your options at wide receiver. Obviously, Ezekiel Elliott's one of the top four running backs out there. And Tony Pollard is no slouch as his backup who could get some third down carries and some goal line carries out of Memphis. So there's a lot of fantasy value. Dalton Schultz and Blake Jarwin you know, and, and Blake Bell as well. It'll be interesting to see who shapes out here in Dallas and who really shows themselves. I'm not sold on Blake Jarwin. I'm going to have to see it to believe it type of thing. But outside of that, I think there's enough value that if you don't get Cooper, you can get Gallup or C.D. Lamb. And I think any one of those you should be proud to get in your fantasy draft. I've been proud to pick up any one of those guys. And, you know, Dak Prescott, like I said, and Ezekiel Elliott, there's a lot of value there. When I look at the schedule for the Dallas Cowboys, you know, they start off the season at the Rams, and the Rams are a question mark. You know, what is what is Cam Akers going to be? How is Jared Goff going to be this season? What are some of these moves going to be now that Jalen Ramsey is there week one? What's that going to look like? So, you know, I think with a lot of question marks out there, that's going to be an interesting game that could go either way. But if we look at that being a, you know, a Cowboys win per se, and I do think the Rams could steal it, but let's call it a Cowboys win. We look at that, then we look at the Falcons at home for Dallas, and then we look at at Seattle could be a tough one for them, but then they have the Browns and the Giants. So then that's the arguable what Mike said coming out of those first few games, if I look at that and I see that, I could see them going, and then Cardinals, I could see that being 5-1, and as Mike was talking about. Then they're at Washington, then they play Washington later on. Let's call that, let's call those two wins, so that's seven wins. And let's say they split with the Eagles, that's eight. And then depending on what Pittsburgh team they see, and at the Ravens could be interesting, but at the Bengals, nine, and then we look at, you know, the Giants at the end of the season. I can argue the Cowboys to ten wins, I feel comfortable with nine and seven. I feel like they could be ten and six, and I think in a ten and six situation is exactly where I thought they would be to fight with Philadelphia for the division. So I could see that happening, and I totally understand if that were to go in that direction. So, Mike, once again, tell everybody what you have the Cowboys at. I have them at eleven and five. The Vegas line is ten, eleven and five, and you know I think it's just yeah. I, I think they're going to come out hot. They're going to come out strong, but you know they do have a couple tough games and division games are always tough 
you know, in the NFC East, uh, you know, and just like in some other divisions, that, that you know, you, you can always have good games against the Giants. You always have good games against the Eagles. You know, you always have those good games when the division's on the line, and a lot of times they do end up splitting those games. Yeah, absolutely, and, and the NFC East is notorious for splitting games. So with that being said, when we look at the teams that we think will be at the top of the heap inside of this division, we're going to shift over to the Philadelphia Eagles, and for some odd reason, for whatever reasons going on here, uh, YouTube really, really wants you to know about the thick nail situation that's going on, but we're going to flip over to the Philadelphia Eagles, Mike, take it away. Or pardon me, pardon me, we're going to go to the New York Giants. I, I went out of order here. I threw a little monkey wrench in there. It's because I was way too focused on the nail clippers, and it just got me, and I got in the moment, and I couldn't get out of it. So we will talk about Philadelphia in a second, but I think it's very interesting that as we started off this video, when we started the Cowboys, it was Cowboys-Giants. When we started the Giants, it was Giants-Cowboys. And so uh, very interesting to see that, how the rivalry starts off this footage brought to you by the NFL and its partners. Now I will tell you, Mike, to take it away, as I'm now focused on football and not on hello, look at the kitty. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think this is a, a great situation here for the Giants. If you look at them as a team on paper, I'm thinking they're an excellent team. I'm thinking there's no way they're not going to make the playoffs. I'm looking they need some more depth at wide receiver. They need somebody desperately to step up. They did beef up the offensive line, but they got one of the most talented players in football. And I'm not talking about Daniel Jones. I'm not talking about Evan Ingram. I'm talking, of course, about Saquon Barkley. They're just going to hand Saquon the ball. They're going to throw Saquon the ball. They're going to try to mix in some Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton. I think he's due to step up and have a big year as well. Their defense can be solid. They seem to always have a pass rush presence, but I'm desperate to find it on the roster this year. Maybe a Leonard Williams, maybe a B.J. Hill. Dexter Lawrence has been up and down, in in my opinion, here. So I, I think they need to do more to pressure the quarterback, but that's the pieces they have to work with. It's not going to change. I mean, we're not going to next week all of a sudden have five new guys there. So, you know, they, they're working with what they got, and hopefully it'll be enough. They do have one of the easier schedules in the league. Like I spoke of before, the NFC East has one of the easier schedules when you look at them team by team against the wins losses from last year. The Giants are number 26 on the strength of schedule out of 32 teams. Vegas has them going 9.5 wins this year. I went through the schedule here. I see them winning at Washington to open up the year. I can see them losing it at the Rams, and I can see a lot of... You know, a couple losses here, a couple wins here. A couple losses here, a couple wins there. Back and forth, ebbs and flows in the schedule. All in all, when I break it down, I got them going 8-8. Eight eight. I'm taking the under as far as the Vegas line. 8-8, eight eight, that may not be enough to get you to the playoffs this year, my friend. So hopefully something else will happen somewhere. Hopefully you'll catch a break somewhere. Hopefully the Washington football team will end up, you know, taking a lot of the negative spotlight and a lot of the negative energy and you'll be able to come out of this. But right now, the way things look, I don't, I, I don't, I don't see it happening. No, you know, when I look at, at this uh, New York Giants team, uh, there are question marks for me. You know, there, there's the top of the heap. You know, Mike talks about tears. I've talked about tears on my show when it comes to fantasy. There is that top of the heap, and then there's everybody else. Top of the heap, Saquon Barkley. Then there's the rest of the team. I like Daniel Jones. I covered Daniel Jones when he was at Duke. His head coach is a quarterback guru in David Cutcliffe. I mentioned David Cutcliffe a bunch of times here on the show. I mentioned him in the first hour of today's show. So I like Daniel Jones. I like the fact that they finally spent some picks getting some offensive linemen and seeing what that's going to look like. So, I mean, these are not household names yet, but they could be. So that'll be something to look at, is if they actually got the right guys. Now, Mike, I'm surprised that you didn't bring up your one of your favorite names of last year, Levine Toilolo. I'm surprised that you didn't talk about Toilolo, and uh, you know, and I didn't play Get Low here on the show. But uh, Evan Engram is obviously the starter at tight end. He is the best receiving option at tight end. Out of all the receivers I see on this, I look at Evan Engram as the main target for Daniel Jones. He should be a fantasy stud. 
but he's got to stay healthy. And this team has to block for Daniel Jones. Sterling Shepard, eh. He's been there 100 years, but he's never been the number one guy. He's supposed to be, but his numbers don't state that. Golden Tate, I don't know why Detroit ever got rid of him. I thought it was one of the dumbest decisions Detroit ever made. Detroit had Golden Tate, Marvin Jones Jr., and Kenny Galladay. Arguably, they had three number ones, and they let one of them go. And then if Kenny Galladay gets injured, Marvin Jones is going to do some things, but there's nobody there to help. I don't know why Golden Tate ended up anywhere else, but he hasn't looked the same in New York. Darius Slayton, young wide receiver, supposed to have a good upside. We'll see. C.J. Board came from the Jaguars. Now he's there. Corey Coleman has never stuck anywhere because he can't stay healthy. Hopefully this year, this year he will. So your best bets when it comes to receiving is Evan Engram. And maybe a healthy Golden Tate. Maybe a Darius Slayton. But right now, it's Evan Engram. Saquon Barkley, the second best player in fantasy football. Not in running back, in fantasy football. Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley. I would argue that with anybody. Above Michael Thomas, above Pat Mahomes, above Lamar Jackson, Saquon Barkley, after Christian McCaffrey. So that's your fantasy value. Defensively, eh, eh, you know what I mean? That's how I feel about the Giants' defense. They're going to do some good things, but if you're streamlining defenses like Mike and I always talk about, it's not a bad bet to do. What I'm extremely proud of and happy for is former Syracuse player who's been on the show a bunch of times, Chris Slayton, found his way onto this Giants roster, and he's there at nose tackle with Delvin Tomlinson. He has an opportunity to be out there, just like Justin Pugh did on the offensive line for the Giants a few years back. So shout out to Chris Slayton. God bless you, and I hope that you have every amazing thing happen and that you have an opportunity to get out there and showcase a lot of great things. And I hope that the Giants fans appreciate and respect you like I do, and I hope they start buying up those jerseys. So with that being said, to take a look at the schedule itself, the Giants have to start off the season against Pittsburgh. Then they have to go to Chicago, whose defense I drafted in two of my three leagues. Then they have San Francisco. Then they're at Los Angeles. Then they're at Dallas. I think arguably the only comfortable win I'm, I would give the Giants in their first six weeks is against Washington. They could go 1-5 to start the season, or 2-4. and four. Then after that, they go at Philadelphia. Maybe they, Let's say they split with Philly, so that's two wins. they got to play Tampa. Then they go at Washington. They say that's three wins because they beat Washington. For a second time. Then they go to Cincinnati. I think that could go either way. I think Joe Burrow could arguably get his first win against the Giants uh, in the NFL. So I'm looking at a team that I can... And then they have to go at Seattle. They have to play Arizona later on in the season. If things are clicking with DeAndre Hopkins and company and Kenyon Drake, that's going to be a danger zone. Then they have to play Cleveland, so let me give them four wins. Then they're at Baltimore and they have Dallas again. I'm looking at a 4-5 to five win New York Giants team this season. I don't think that's an easy schedule by any stretch of the imagination. Mike's going to put the Giants at 8-8. Eight and eight. I have the Giants at 4-12. and 12. We'll take a step aside for a fast break. When we come back inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly presented by the Wildcat Sports Pub on 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York, we will be back here with the other half of the NFC East in alphabetical order, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Washington football team please oh please oh please lord above give somebody an idea so i can stop saying washington football team i feel like i'm living in some bizarro world right now we'll take a step aside we'll be back right after this It's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or iced milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh, by hand, daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvalite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, carvalanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvalite ice cream. Carvel the way. It's what happy tastes like. Kefi Kabam offers same-day local delivery of our products, offering no delivery charge for Onondaga County. Shop KefiKabal.com for fresh roasted coffee beans, cold brew, travel mugs, and all your essential Kefi Kabal needs. Kefi Kabal, coffee for the soul.
The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 487 2222 for the Wildcat family friendly sports pub and restaurant. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. You also have us on Facebook Live on Facebook.com backslash LiveNowDT. We appreciate you being here inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios right here with you, Cafe Kubal, with numerous locations that you will find all throughout Central New York. You can find them at their Salina Cafe on South Salina Street, as well as their Creekwalk Commons on West Water Street, their Eastwood Cafe on James Street, their, their cafe inside of the Golisano Children's Hospital, and their newest location on 208 North Townsend Street in Syracuse, New York, which is the Holly Green Cafe, and there will be more to come. There's also local delivery, and if you live in Onondaga County, Cafe Cabal will deliver to you with no delivery fee, and they have the mobile cafe that will come to your location, to your neighborhood, to your place of business. You can get more information on that by going to CafeKubal.com. You can also go to WakeUpCallDT.com and go and go to the uh, go to the Central New York tab on WakeUpCallDT.com. Scroll down to Cafe Kubal and all the information, including the form to fill out for the mobile cafe to come to you, is all there at a, just one click away on WakeUpCallDT. Dot com. So we appreciate you so very much. We're inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly presented by the Wildcat Sports Pub. Mike and I have done the first half of the NFC East, and by first half I mean in alphabetical order. We're now shifting to the second part of this, which will start with the Philadelphia Eagles. So I'll hand it off to my partner in crime here, Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame FantasyFootball.com. But before I do that, I will tell you to find your way to our Fantasy Football group, Winning Fantasy Football on Facebook. All you have to do is go to Facebook.com or your Facebook app and type in Winning Fantasy Football. Click Join, and you'll join one of the funniest, most exciting, entertaining, and informative places that you will find when it comes to fantasy football. Like I said, it's not A, it's not one, it is the Fantasy Football Power Hour, and this is the Fantasy Football Group for you to join. With that being stated, Mike, I bring you on here to continue our conversation as people watch the NFL video on the Philadelphia Eagles that belongs to the NFL and its partners. I will shift it over to you. Boys, I, I like the team they have together. I like the speed they have at receiver. I like their draft pick, Jalen Rager. I think he's dinged up a little bit right now. But I'm going to give you a deep, dark horse. I'm going to give you a deep sleeper. I'm going to give you a guy, if you're in a dynasty league, he probably won't even get drafted. I'm going to give you a guy who might be the starting slot receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles. Get your pen, get your paper ready. John Hightower, little-known name out of Boise State. This is a speedster, former track star, ran a 4.43 at the Combine. That's pretty fast. He doesn't have a lot of football behind him, though. Played in... Uh, community college there in Mississippi. Then Boise State noticed him, scooped him up, and he was their deep threat guy. He was their speedster. He was their guy on the outside. But he's also a future toe drag swag member. I've seen him have nice foot presence inside the lines, knows where he is on the field, needs to develop more football skills, needs to become faster or quicker in that regard. It's kind of ironic when you hear me talk about a guy at 4.4340, and you, I'm saying quicker. Speed and quickness are two different things. 
to me, quickness is your reaction to a situation. How fast can you recognize the problem and attack it? Speed is speed. I can't teach speed, but I can teach you how to be quicker. Little things. So this is a guy, as the game becomes quicker for him, he's going to continue to develop. And he's got some guys there with him, some some veterans. And Deshaun Jackson, who's a speedster himself, who can help mentor this young man and make him into an all-pro player. If you're in a dynasty league, look for this guy in a waiver wire. If you're in a dynasty league, maybe you're going to scratch, you know, scoop him up late in your rookie draft. Or if you're in a startup league, the same thing. Uh, I like Alshon Jeffrey if he can stay healthy. I think their offensive line is stellar. I like what they have in Miles Sanders, Saquon Barkley Jr., taking off just like he is. Look out for the name Boston Scott. I've been on him for a little while here, past couple years, as one of those dynasty guys you keep stashed. And here he is. He's going to have that Darren Sproles type uh, role in the Philly offense. So look out for that if you're a deep PPR league. That's the guy you want to target. The defense is going to be stellar. They're going to be able to get after the quarterback as usual. That's going to help them on the back end. They've had to shuffle and move some things around. That's been their Achilles heel the past couple of years. But I think they're going to be on the right track all the way around in that regards, offense and defense. Vegas has their win total at 9.5. I have a middle of the road in it. Again, I had, you know, the division games are tough. When you play the Giants and, the, and Dallas twice and the Washington football team. You know, they, they, these games a lot of times get split. You know, I'm looking at the Giants. There's a home-and-home home split. I'm looking at Dallas. There's a home-and-home home split. But I do have them sweeping the Washington football team. <laughs> With that being said, I have the Philadelphia Eagles going a miserable 8-8. Eight and eight. I think they're going to underwhelm and underperform in their wins and losses. But I think fantasy-wise, there are some bright spots on the team. Just they're not just there yet. I don't think. Yeah, you know, Philadelphia. Like I said, I, I'm I'm getting a higher on Dallas as we go. I thought some good things about them a few weeks ago. I feel better about them now. I thought Philadelphia would squeak by them to win the division. That doesn't mean that Dallas isn't going to hit a wild card. I think they're going to vie for that. I think both of them will make the playoffs if it happens the way that I'm seeing. But at the same time, I do very well believe that. Dallas could take the division. I think it's going to squeak. It's going to be very, very, very close. Somebody's going to squeak by the other team. I mean, you look at last year, Philadelphia 9-7, and seven, Dallas 8-8. Eight and eight. So just goes to show you how close they typically are. Uh, to take a look at the team as far as, you know, fantasy football-wise, uh, Carson Wentz, he's a good guy to have, obviously, on your team. If he stays healthy, he can provide for you. I don't think he is the best of the best. I don't think he's a Tier 1 quarterback as far as fantasy goes but he is somebody to have as a good backup uh, miles sanders i'm sold on him i'm so happy that in uh, one of my drafts we did at the wildcat sports pub on site on location on 3680 milton avenue in camillus new york well i had some great food and and had to and got to put the draft up on a ginormous i'm going to steal that word from will farrell a ginormous screen and it was one of the coolest things that we have ever gotten to do it was also a big shout-out I want to make to the Wildcat that it was my first live on-site, on-location event that I've gotten to do since the beginning of Corona. The last live on-site location event that I did was at the Wildcat, ironically, with the boys lacrosse team from West Genesee and our West Genesee monthly spotlight special. The last one I got to do was at Wildcat. The first one I got to do back, at Wildcat. So thank you to Danny Tillman and the entire team for all that you've done to stay open and stay well and provide a service. And it's important now more than ever to support Central New York so that I can continue to have those live events there that people love. Well, if you want to have them there, you got to keep these local places open. So do what you can for takeout, delivery, whatever it may be, curbside pickup, dining in, grabbing a drink. Make sure you go out to the Wildcat, 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York. And you can also call them for curbside pickup, takeout, and delivery at 315-487-2222. In that first draft, I got Saquon Barkley, as I was saying, and Miles Sanders back-to-back, -back, uh, not necessarily w one round after the other, but when I was able to pick them up, I thought it was fantastic to reunite these Penn State running backs. And so my team might be one of the only teams out there that can do that because, in reality, they're playing in the same division but not on the same team. So I'm happy to have them in fantasy. That's what makes it cool about playing fantasy football. You can unite players that may never play – with each other ever again or maybe never in general so 
Saquon Barkley and Miles Sanders, happy to have you both on my team. I think Miles is definitely worth a play for you to go out there and get him. Uh, Adrian Killens Jr., I love this fact, and watch out for this guy. Mike talks about deep sleepers in Philadelphia. Well, I got one for you. Adrian Killens Jr., a guy that was recruited by Syracuse that ended up ultimately at UCF in that high-powered, speedy offense. This is a guy that you're going to have to take a look at and circle. Remember Darren Sproles and all the things that he did and how scrappy he was and how fast he was? Well, Adrian Killens Jr., is the best Adrian Killens Jr. I'm not going to call him the second best Darren Sproles. This is a name that you may come to know, and maybe he won't spend his entire career in Philadelphia, but he's definitely going to showcase himself at some point. I do believe that, and so I'm happy that he's there. You know, they got a stable of running backs, so you got Corey Clement who can catch out of the backfield. You got Elijah Holyfield, Adrian Killens Jr., and then above that you have Miles Sanders and Boston Scott. A lot of guys to look to. I think that some of these guys might be, you know, free agency pickups to help you out. If you have an injury and if you're caught in a bind, then you know Philadelphia is one of those teams to circle as far as running back depth. But uh, I'm definitely sold on Miles Sanders. Elshon Jeffrey, as if he stays healthy, Mike and I talked about that. Greg Ward Jr., who I covered when he was uh, Greg Ward Jr. when he was in Houston as their quarterback. I actually have a video of him kissing the trophy of when they won the American Athletic Conference trophy, the first ever time the American Athletic had a championship game and they won it. Now he's a wide receiver, and not only is he a wide receiver that Philly took a chance on, he's risen up the depth chart from the practice squad, I think originally where he was, to where he is right now, which is in the top three. Uh, Jalen Rieger, who they drafted, as Mike said, is injured. Uh, an interesting pick here that they went Rieger when they could have gone to other places, but they reached for him, and they gave him an opportunity. This will be an interesting thing to circle and see what it's going to become. And uh, just Deshaun Jackson, uh, remember, uh, folks, you know, people, everybody think about him and focusing on him. This is Alshon Jeffrey's team. It became his team without Deshaun. It became his team with Deshaun. And, you know, now we're looking for some of these young guys. J.J. Arsenega-Whiteside, uh, John Hightower that Mike mentioned. A lot of talent here in Philadelphia that is either going to show up or not. And this is going to be a year where somebody can really take the reins and prove to be the person because Alshon Jeffrey is not going to be there forever. And we know that he hasn't always been there throughout the entire season. Hopefully this year he will be. Zach Ertz and Dallas Godert, arguably uh, the best one-two punch at tight ends in the nation next to uh, Rob Gronkowski and O.J. Howard. I would definitely say you got to look at those uh, gentlemen there. But a lot of good things to be had here when you look at the tight end position. Ertz got edged out by Mark Andrews in our ranking for top tight ends. Uh, Mark got put at number three. Zach got put at number four. Just goes to show how high uh, Mike and I are, uh, I on uh, uh, how we both are on Mike, Mark Andrews as uh, as we step into the 2020, 2021 season. Defensively, not a ton to write home about. I mean, there's some there's some talent here on defense. Uh, Darius Slay, you know, and and you know, and uh, and Fletcher Cox, and so on and so forth. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, when I look at Philadelphia's schedule, I can tell you that I rely fantasy wise on their offense. And what they have to give you there, if they, you know, if they give them a win against Washington to start the season, let's say they defeat the Rams and the Bengals, then they have at 49ers at, at the Steelers. They potentially could steal one of those games, then they got to play the Ravens and the Giants. So let's say if they have one, two, three, let's say four and one to start, and then I'll give them a five, you know, a fifth win, uh, split with the Cowboys is six, have them beat the Giants again is seven, and then at the Browns, I'll say eight. And then ultimately from there, I think they can get themselves to nine. I had the Cowboys at ten, at ten and six comfortably at nine and seven. I think I could put Philadelphia right there, which is why I think we're going to be in a very interesting scenario if both of these teams end up going ten and six or nine and seven. I feel comfortable putting Philadelphia right around that ten and six area, and that's where I think you know they're going to be. So, Mike, uh, once again, uh, make mention here so that people know your uh, your 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 final that you have record wise for Philadelphia. Yeah, I have Philadelphia going 500. I got them going 8-8, eight eight, uh, just under the Vegas total. I think they're going to have an okay year. Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, I think 9-7 and seven is safe. Uh, I think 10-6 and six puts them in that interesting situation with Dallas. But the more I talk about it and the more I think about it, I think Dallas is going to be the one to edge them out instead of the other way around this season for 2020-2021. With that being said... Uh, Mike and I will shift to the final team that we have to talk about here in our coverage of the NFC East analysis, 
and that is the Washington football team. It says Redskins, and it'll say it in this video that belongs to the NFL and his partners, but we don't know what the helmet's going to look like. We don't know what the heck they're going to be called, but we do know that they're going to play football, God willing. So here we go, Mike. What do you got? Well, their helmet's going to look like the Alabama helmet in a sense where it's going to have the number on one side of the helmet of the individual player. It's just going to be solid, no logo, no mascot. So interesting in that regards. But you know what, with the inability to have fans at some places, inability to have a lot of fans at other places and a lot of restrictions, they're going to pipe music onto the field. All these negative things, you know, and you look at the Washington team, and we talked about it before, you know, regular broadcast news is normally negative, negative, negative. Oh, sports. Well, it's the same thing with Washington. You want to take your eye off all the political mess and unrest in Washington and around the country. So you're like, okay, let's turn on the football game. Oh, crap, the Washington football team's on. We're in that market. You look at them, they're going to start out the year 0-7. They had the bye week in eight, so I don't think they're going to suffer a loss there. I think it's going to turn it around the bye week. I think they can come back and beat the Giants at home after that. But I'm looking at their roster. I like the future. I like the players they brought in the past couple years. Last year, bringing in Terry McLaurin and Kelvin Harmon, uh, both speedy receivers. Of course, Dwayne Askin was Terry McLaurin's uh, partner at Ohio State. And Dwayne Atkins has struggled. But you know who hasn't? Alex Smith. He's been struggling for the past two years since that near-catastrophic leg injury. I'm surprised he's back on the football field, quite frankly. He's right behind Haskins on the depth chart. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point near we saw an Alex Smith, and he has the potential to be a comeback player of the year. I'm not going to put it past him. Uh, you, you know, there's a, he's got a long road ahead of him still, but he's come so far in his medical recovery, and I'm sure there's a lot of emotional and mental recovery with that as well. But I'm looking at the guys they picked up this year. You want to talk about speed? You want to talk about guys that can run? I mentioned McLaurin and Harmon are speedy. Trey Quinn is fast as well. I'm looking at the guy they brought in out of Liberty. I'm looking at the late round wonder. I'm looking at Antonio Gandy Golden out of Liberty. Guy runs a 4 5. I'm looking on their roster, and I see Antonio Gibson. We know that name from Memphis. You want to know who's going to be the number one running back come the middle of the season in Washington? Antonio Gibson. A lot of other people know that. A lot of other people are on this bandwagon. His his stock has risen dramatically in the past seven days. Just seven days ago, he was going an average of the 13th round if he went at all in some drafts. Now he's going at the beginning of the eighth round. That's moving up half the draft almost for some leagues. That's an incredible movement. I think he's been having an excellent training camp. From what the coaches said, you don't get to see a lot of a film. You don't get to see a lot of stuff other than stretching and regular generic drills. You can't see any plays or play action or scrimmage. They're just not allowing that type of access because that's all the access anybody really has is they show us on TV what video we get to see. I'll tell you a guy you're going to want to see is a guy that's as fast as a wide receiver on their team, but he's a rookie. And I don't mean Chase Young. Chase Young is fast, and he's going to pressure the quarterback, and that's a great ad, top of the draft. You have to get a guy. You have to pressure the quarterback in this league, and you have to protect your quarterback. They're going to be able to pressure the quarterback. Montez Sweat, not quite getting it done last year, but that's okay. He doesn't have to. He can play the opposite side of Chase Young. The guy I'm really talking about, though, is Kaliki Hudson. This guy is 5'11", 230. He runs a 4'5". This guy's as fast as the wide receivers, faster than some wide receivers. This is a guy who had outside linebackers going to make a lot of tackles. This is a speedster. He has a nose for the ball. He's got some NFL things to work on still. And remember, guys, please, there's been limited training camps. There hasn't been the regular routine that these rookies would go through. So some of these guys may have challenges in coverages or schemes or packages. So there's going to be an additional learning curve this year. Be patient with your rookie picks. If you're in a dynasty league, that's easy to do. If you're not, if you're in a redraft league, I get it. These rookies may not be guys you're going to stretch for. But when I tell you to go grab somebody or look at somebody because they're going to be it, 
you better go ahead and take that advice and jump on it because how many times, Dan, have we mentioned a name and all of a sudden within six months they're a household name? So I'm not saying I'm discovering these guys, but I am taking notice before some other people who are doing the same thing we're doing, and that's trying to win a fantasy football championship. I've got Washington finishing the year abysmally. I got them. The Vegas thinks they're going to be a five-and-a-half win team. That's the line, five-and-a-half. I think they're going to struggle to get that far. They're going to come out of the box 0-7. and seven. I got them going 4-12 and 12 on a year. Yeah, you know, and I think it's funny how we look at that. If you have Washington going 4-12 and 12 and I have the Giants going 4-12, and 12, then we could see an actual split for two teams that are arguably 10-6 and six, and then Washington and, you know, Washington and the Giants – Four and twelve at the bottom, and then Philadelphia and Dallas at the top, fighting at ten and six. So seeing two teams fight for last place and two teams fight for first place, with the middle kind of just wide open in the grand scheme of things here. As we look at this Washington football team, and again, I hope that I don't have to say this, but I'm going to have fun with it and say Washington football team as much as humanly possible, while we have the chance to talk about how ridiculous that sounds and how much they need to find their identity since Dan Snyder came in. I don't think they've found their identity. I don't think they found it on the field. Now they have a new head coach. God willing, Ron Rivera, be safe, healthy, and cancer-free. My prayers up and blessings down for you. And uh, in Jesus' name, I pray for that. So with that being said, you know, new head coach, still not sold on Dwayne Haskins Jr. Alex Smith's trying to come back. Kyle Allen comes in from Carolina. And then you have Adrian Peterson, J.D. McKissick, Bryce Love, Peyton Barber, Antonio Gibson, them trying to figure things out. The wide receivers are trying to figure things out with Terry McLaurin, Steve Sims, Dontrell Inman, Antonio Gandy, Golden, Paul Richardson, and on and on and on and on and on. They're still trying to figure out their tight ends with Logan Thomas, Jeremy Sprinkle, and Richard Rodgers. There is no definite anywhere from quarterback to running back to wide receiver to tight end. That's an issue for Washington. That is a giant issue that they don't have a designated, this is the guy. Now, do I think Dwayne Haskins should be the guy? And his number one target should be Terry McLaurin, and they should run it like they did at Ohio State? Yeah. But do I think that that's going to happen as easy as it sounds? No. Do I believe you, Mike, that Antonio Gibson's going to be a household name? Absolutely. Do I think he'll be the starter? Yes, I do. Do I think he'll be a fantasy stud that people next year are going to go, i got to get Antonio Gibson. I can't believe that I didn't know who he was a year before. I do believe that. But do I think Adrian Peterson's got a little bit left in the tank and some more touchdowns for you? I do. Antonio Gandy Golden, listen, it's wide open for you, sir. Why not? Why not have Antonio Squared take over Washington? Gandy Golden and Gibson. It's a better time as any because nobody else has proven themselves on this team yet. The one that I would lean on the most saying that has proved the most is Anto Adrian Peterson proving that he has a long life expectancy in the NFL. He doesn't quit. He doesn't stop, and he's had more left in the tank than I think maybe anybody besides himself gave him credit for. So with that being with that being said, there is talent on this team, but I think the Antonios have the opportunity to take over. I think Dwayne Haskins has the best shot, or should have the best shot, at seeing what they can do. But when we look at the schedule, I agree with you. they got to play the Eagles, at the Cardinals, at the Browns, the Ravens, the Rams at home. At the Giants, the Cowboys, the Giants at home. Got to play the Giants twice in three weeks. At the Lions, the Bengals, at the Cowboys, at the Steelers, at the 49ers, Seahawks, Panthers, and at the Eagles. When I look at this and I say, what do I think they can win? Well, maybe against Arizona, but they're going to Arizona, so that's tough for me. Maybe at the Browns. Maybe they can split with the Giants there. The Bengals. So, really? Washington, I, I see you in a place where I think you could be going 3-13. and 13. So I'm going to say I have the Washington football team. You don't know how annoying it is because normally if I write something, I could write Cowboys, Eagles, yada, 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 and I don't have to write the whole name. But Washington, I have to because I can't just write that I have the football team because they're all football teams. So I have the Washington football team at 3-13 and 13, potentially – potentially 4-12. and 12. That is where I have the Washington Redskins. I believe that they will join the New York Jets with high draft picks as well as the Las Vegas Raiders. These teams are going to be fighting for first pick. I think Washington could arguably fight with the Jets for the first overall pick. 
There's fantasy value on this team. It lies in the relative unknown, non-household names right now. But you can't say that Mike and I didn't tell you. I also like an outside shot at Terry McLaurin. That's where I'm looking when it comes to the Washington Redskins. And that is where we're at as we step out of this conversation and step out of kind of where things are at right now when push comes to shove of this team. With that being said, Mr. Safka, I want to hand it back to you before we wrap things up. There's something special that we're going to do, but we're going to take a step aside for a fast break. And when we come back, Mike and I will talk about that right after this. Cafe Cabal Mobile Cafe brings the cafe experience to you. We'll roll out to your neighborhood or office, ready to serve our locally crafted espresso bar to our loyal patrons. Inquire at CafeCabal.com. Cafe Cabal, coffee for the soul. Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory, located on 201 7th North Street in Liverpool, is home to over 40 flavors with more than 200 flavors in their total wheelhouse. Sky's the limit for this sweet and savory Central New York company. Keep it local at your parties, fundraisers, wedding showers, baby showers, and more by calling 315-450-MA-PA. That's 315-450-6272 for popcorn bars with custom flavors and colors at your upcoming event. Make sure to visit them on 201 7th North Street in Liverpool, New York. And for more information, go to maandpazsnacks.com. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory. How corny are you? The Millhouse Market, located on 3790 New York 13 in Pulaski, New York, is worth the drive every time. Make sure you download their app on the Google Play and Apple App Stores. And once you have it on any of your devices, all of your devices, you have their entire menu at your fingertips. Their breakfast menu to their beverages, as well as their homemade breads, homemade desserts, and everything in between from their brick oven pizzas to their bowls to their salads and their sandwiches that are named after all of the families that helped to settle what is today is Pulaski. They are ingrained in our community and they are ingrained in our taste buds. And you have that absolutely easy way to order on your phone or on any device and you have contactless pay. You don't have to hand your card to anybody. You can drive right up to the Millhouse Market on 3790 New York 13 in Pulaski, New York and pick it up in the drive through window and be on your way. So contactless pay, you got the app, you got the contactless pay, and you could drive right up to the window and be on your way. Such an easy way to get the food that you love and the food that makes you feel absolutely, tremendously great. There's nobody that's come up with the flavors that the Millhouse Market has, and they're constantly adding new things. There's one thing to have a specialty sandwich on a menu, but when all of your sandwiches are special and all of them have their unique taste, and you have the opportunity to develop it a little bit because you choose your bread and this, that, and whatnot. So you have a say in what goes on, and they bring you something that you're not going to find anywhere else, things that you may have never even thought of. That's the Millhouse Market. And whether you're, you are a walk away from it, a mile away from it, or 20 miles away, wherever you are, they're worth the drive every time because they're different, they're unique, and they care. 3790 New York 13 in Pulaski, New York. Head out to the Millhouse Market today. With that being stated, Mike and I are here with you for just a, another moment before we wrap up today's broadcast. And I know that there's something that people have been waiting for that they really get excited that we do. And so, Mike, I have a proposition for you. Are you ready? Sure. Since we have spent each week of these last seven weeks, and we'll spend one more week next week, breaking down each division, four teams at a time of the NFL, of their 32 teams, which I think is a great way to do it because it gives every team ample time for conversation. The leagues that have drafted at the Wildcat Sports Pub, they want to be graded. These owners that live in central and upstate New York, they want to know what you think. They want to know what I think. They want to have a draft grade, and so I want to bring that to them. But because we've dedicated so much time to the divisions, 
and I don't want to take away from that, would you be open to creating a special where you and I go live and we only discuss the grading for each of the three leagues at the Wildcat Sports Pub, and we do a Wildcat Sports Pub special that is just on our reaction to the fantasy drafts that happened here in 2020. Would you be willing to do that as a bonus show? Yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm, I'm, I'm always looking at drafts. I'm always looking at other people's drafts. I'm always looking at what other people think because that kind of gives you a barometer as to where the temperature is in the room when you're drafting. So I get enjoyment out of doing stuff like that. Absolutely. Without a doubt, I'm ready. So we will be doing a bonus show. Stay close to Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, Twitter at Call DT, and Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT to find out when that show is going to happen. And Greg, who is a part of our league for the first time ever, one of our new players, Greg says he loves the idea. Jerry said it's my reality too, going back to Washington. The Washington football team needs new ownership. Snyder is a spoiled brat. I know more about quantum physics than he knows about football. And you know what? I Not only do I agree with that, but I would also say to you, Jerry, if you know so much about quantum physics, maybe you can help us out with the quantum realm with Marvel and Ant-Man in the upcoming third installment of the Ant-Man franchise. With that being said, Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com. I need you to do a couple things today. Go to Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com. Click on Dominate Your Draft. Pick your either standard or PPR cheat sheet. Hit checkout. And when you're doing that, type in Score Free 5. It's all in caps Score Free in the number 5. Get that cheat sheet for free thanks to Mike Sofka. Do that today. And then also, while you're on the site, Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com, Utilize the paid services, and if you've never paid for fantasy help before, now's the time to consider it, because you can get 40% off. That's almost half off the sticker price. Go there today to Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com. Pick any of the premium opportunities on Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com and type in the code at checkout, Orlando40. That's Orlando in caps, 40, and get 40% off any of those premium products that Mike has on Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com. And the last thing I'll ask you to do, number three, is on Facebook to type in Winning Fantasy Football and join our group. Outside of that, you've done it all, folks, and we have faith in you. If you've listened to us, we're not 100% correct about anything. Mike and I, just like anybody else, cannot tell you everything that we said is 100% going to happen. But if we go back in history and we look at the timeline and we listen to the shows and we watch the videos, I would bet on us more than I bet on most things when it comes to fantasy football. With that being said, Mike, thank you for being such an amazing addition to my show years ago and to being so committed to what we're doing, which is to literally come on the air at least once a week and help other people to the best of our ability. I cannot thank you enough for the time that you have spent to be the fantasy stud that you are and to be my co-host in something that I greatly care about so very much within my company. Oh, I appreciate it, Dan. It's my pleasure. I, I enjoy doing it. You know, the secret to to, ha to a happy life is to find something you like and to, and to do that. Do that thing. So this is what I like to do. So I'm, I'm glad to do it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. That coming from Mike Sofka. I'll talk to you soon, sir, and we'll be doing that fantasy special coming up very soon. All right. Sounds great. Thanks, Dan. Talk to you next time. Thank you, Mike. So with that being said, with Mike Sofka being here on the broadcast, we just gave you our NFC East analysis, talking with you about – all that is going on in the NFC when it came to all of these teams, the Dallas Cowboys, the New York Giants, the Philadelphia Eagles, and the Washington football team. I did not stutter. I'm going to go back and watch this video someday and be like, oh, my God, I still can't believe that that's, that's, that was the name of the team, at least for a couple months. Hopefully, hopefully by the start of the season, which is next week, Washington, you will have a name for your team. Maybe you're waiting for that. Maybe that's what you want to do. You want to go right up to it and – and, like, nobody's going to know the name of the team, and the commentators and the broadcasters are going to call it the Washington football team. And then when you run out, you're going to have a banner, and, and the team's going to rip through the banner that's got the actual new name and logo on it. Maybe that's what you're going to do. Maybe I just gave you a really good idea, and I need to be paid money for that. But whatever you're going to do, figure it out, because fans like Jerry Hart are waiting as patiently as you possibly can for a team that has no identity right now on or off the field. With that being said, I want to thank Mike Sofka for 
the analysis of the NFC East and everything that he does here on the show. I want to thank Bob Holiday for an incredible first hour, and you can go watch that video on Facebook.com backslash Live Now DT. You can also watch it on a Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, and I'll be adding it to uh, I'll be adding it to YouTube.com backslash Wake Up Call DT as well. So check those out. Uh, thanks to Mon Paws Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory for always giving us the list of incredible uh, topics and guests every single day. And thank you to Cafe Kubal for being our studio partner and holding it down in such an awesome way. I can honestly tell you this: I, I have a uh, Cafe Kubal uh, mask to wear, obviously during these Corona times, and I went into multiple establishments and they talked to me they saw my mask and they talked to me about cafe kubal so i was promoting cafe kubal without saying a word and then all i got was positive feedback and i went to core life and they're talking about how you know he's like oh i just went to cafe kubal i got the guatemala and i was like oh really that's in my studio and then uh we went to i forget uh, where else we went so we went into another place i was with my buddy evan and then they made mention of it and they're like oh cafe kubal da, da, da. they started talking about it so uh, pretty amazing and pretty incredible how much promotion you can do without saying a word. And shout out to Cafe Kubal that the people that the total strangers that connected with me on Cafe Kubal only had uh, positive conversations with me about it. So shout out to what they're doing and uh, to the entire team there at Cafe Kubal. Appreciate you. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. And God bless to each and every uh, person out there that's listening, reading, watching, and enjoying on WakeUpCallDT.com as well as everybody on Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, Twitter at Call DT, and Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT. You know where to be every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. minimal. Uh, we typically go over. I don't think I've done a show under two hours. Uh, I don't think I've done many of them that have been, uh, that have been two hours in a long time. Uh, most of them are two hours plus under promise over deliver. Uh, you can tune in every Monday through Friday live from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern time. We're on Facebook where you can watch and listen. On Facebook.com backslash Live Now DT, and we're on MixLR where you can listen anywhere in the world to internet streaming radio on MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. If you download the MixLR app, you can search Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora and pick us up there. The archives are also there for you on MixLR to listen to shows that have already aired live. Uh, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, iTunes Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts, the RSS feed, Podbean, and iHeartRadio. All places where you can search Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora to get our archive of over 1,400 shows. You can also ask Alexa to play the latest episode of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, and she'll do that for you. And I want to thank all of our partners, Cafe Kubal, Wildcat Sports Pub, Carvel DeWitt, Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory, as well as Chick-fil-A, Cicero, Honda City of Liverpool, Avicoli's, a Canine Camp Dog Daycare, Canine Campground Dog Boarding, Chapper's Pizza Pub, the Millhouse Market, and Borio's Restaurant for all that you do to give us such amazing products and services in this incredible community that we have here in central and upstate New York. My love and my appreciation to each of you and to your families. Have a great day, and as always, as I always tell you, God bless, no stress. Truly, do your best. I will talk with you soon right here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Have an incredible day.